Hello! We want to welcome you once again to Crooked Courage. This is a podcast that tells the story of diverse people. We are shooting here in Hyde Park and we are excited today because we have on our show today, you will not believe it, we have Jeff Edstrom. And he is a Boy Scout leader. We're going to get into some other things. But one of the ways that I know Jeff is from his leadership with the Boy Scouts. So it's so good to have you with us well, today. Well, it's good to be here. Thank you for agreeing to be on our podcast. Well, thank you for having our troop at this church. So it's a really important thing to, to have that partnership. Yes, yes. So tell, tell me a little bit about... Um, what it um, what what it entails, what it means to be a Boy Scout leader. Well, I'm the Scoutmaster for Troop 512 here at the United Church of Hyde Park, and I'm the primary adult leader who works with the Scouts. We have other adult leaders, such as the committee chairman, the charter or organization representative. I'm in charge of the programming for the Scouts and putting together how do they move forward in ranks and how do they do their merit badges, and really try and uh, be that lead for that. We try to be a boy-led troop, um, mm -hmm. and now it's, it's scout-led, it's because the BSA is now, it has girl troops as well. Uh, but it's really about building up the character and the confidence uh, of the scouts in themselves by doing and learning skills and learning about different ideas and really not necessarily becoming a master of all of them, but doing them enough so they, they can see they can do a wide range of things. Yes, yes. So when I hear of Boy Scouts, I think of, I don't know what comes to mind, but it, 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 it feels like uh, something for a particular group of people. How is the Boy Scouts accessible to just everyday urban kids? I don't know if that it's, makes sense. Well, this... Our troop has been around since 1923, mm -hmm. and we have had over 80-some uh, Eagle Scouts. For the last 10 years, we've had about 10 or, or more. Actually, seven years, it's, it's 10. Um, but we're really about getting outdoors, and it's about uh, learning about yourself as a Scout. So uh, there have, I'm the Roundtable Commissioner for the Greater South Side, so we're working with youths of all uh, from all backgrounds, uh, particularly in the urban area, and really trying to give these kids a, uh, an opportunity to go out and learn that they can do all of these things. They can do knots, they can do first aid, they can learn about themselves, but they're also uh, learning to work with uh, some adult role models too, to see how they should pattern themselves. Or, you know, we always try to talk about um, what, how are we presenting ourselves to them so that they can see a good role model. And it doesn't matter about the uh, race, religion, background. Uh, if you don't have uh, money to get into the Scouts, we try and find ways. You know, we raise, raise money so we can do. Right now we're selling popcorn, for instance, to try and... It, is, it can get expensive because everyone needs to buy a uniform. They need to get the books and their fees. Uh, there's camping. Uh, there's summer camp, but it's really all about uh, these kids going out and learning about themselves. And it doesn't matter if you're out in rural areas or in an urban area, it's, you have the same needs. Right. So just a little bit more of a push. Today, kids are into media. Mm -hmm. They're into looking cool. And, you know, they're into certain images. Mm -hmm. And they're into rap music mm -hmm. and TikTok. And, you know, mm -hmm. how, how, how do, do you, you Yeah, how do you, you know, when I think of Boy Scouts, it well, doesn't look too cool. Well, you got to remember, the Boy Scouts, I mean, when I was a teenager, I mean, I, I didn't know whether or not the Boy Scouts were cool or not. It just it wasn't as active. And I think, um, you know, for instance, we use some of those things for them to engage. Um, cell phones is a big thing. Every kid has their cell phone. Mm -hmm. So, like, for instance, on this, this coming Friday, we're going to be doing geocaching with their cell phone. Mm -hmm. Their phone is a computer uh, that's more powerful than got us to the moon and back. Mm -hmm. um, so they can use that uh, the geocaching is where there are these little 
I guess, treasures hidden all around the world, and there's a lot in the neighborhood. And um, there's an app that tells you where they are, but you have to kind of follow the, the clues. You have to use your phone as a navigational tool, as a compass, mm -hmm. uh, to try and find that. And then there's usually a story associated with it. Well, like by the Roby House, there it will tell the story about what's at the Roby House. Mm -hmm. So we try to use the technology that they are engaged in mm -hmm. to participate. Um, during the last few months when we've been meeting uh, online, we've been looking at things like, you know, doing the virtual meetings, mm -hmm. using media. Um, one scout was showing how he does animation uh, using the computer. Mm -hmm. So it can't just be, we're going to be doing these older skills, which are important, mm -hmm. but we have to engage them in what they're using right now. So how did you become involved? Because you said you didn't, you weren't born into it. Well, so yeah. So how, how did you become involved with the Boy Scouts? Well, what happened, as a, uh, a young kid, I was uh, a Cub Scout. Okay. Up until about the age 10 or 11. My parents had actually been adult leaders for the Cub Scouts. My dad had been mm -hmm. a merit badge counselor and I think an assistant scout master for Boy Scouts, mm -hmm. where we grew up uh, in uh, Hoffman Estates or the greater Schaumburg metropolitan area. And so, they had shown me about the importance of adult leadership and parents getting involved in that. Mm -hmm. uh, and when my son was 11, we got invited to an open house here for the scouts. And one of his friends said, let's go and uh, check this out. And he did. And he became involved. He wanted to do mm -hmm. the Boy Scouts. And I decided, well, if this is important, I should probably be involved too. And so mm -hmm. I got involved as a merit badge counselor at first, someone helping out at meetings. And within nine months, I was suckered into becoming Scoutmaster. And I've been doing that since 2014. Yeah. Is there one child you can think of that um, just has left a strong impression on you since you've been working? Well, what's interesting is all of them are different. And they all leave a really good impression. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, especially the ones who are making it to Eagle, where you can see them from when they're very young and they're growing and they're maturing. You could see it. And when they become Eagle Scouts, mm -hmm. there's like, they're standing up straighter. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there was one kid who was really, he, had, he was already in the troop when my son Henry joined. And he was just all over the place. He had no focus. Uh, whenever he'd ask a question, he'd delay his answer by a while. And over time, by being in the Boy Scout program, and his dad was very involved too, so we were focused on thinking about how can we make sure that he is going to advance and become more. And he became Eagle Scout. Mm -hmm. And really, and he really learned, there were a couple times when he would do harder merit badges like life saving, mm -hmm. wilderness survival, where you have to sleep outside, uh, where he didn't do it the first summer, but he did it the second or maybe two or three years later, and he finished yeah. it. And he gained more confidence in himself. And now, you know, he's going to school and working at the same time, uh, really uh, advancing a remarkable way. That distance he traveled from where he was to where he is now mm -hmm. was so far. And scouting, really, he, he says that was one, one of the key things that kept him involved, kept him engaged. He would... I guess be bullied at school, but his friends were at the troop, mm -hmm. and they would all like do things together. Mm -hmm. And you know, he's a couple years older, but he was local, and he was still participating, and still keeping in touch with them now. Uh, but he's a junior now at Chicago State, and really working hard. Okay, okay. And so your son went off to college yes, this year to Mississippi State Mississippi University. State. That's right. <laughs> And it had some, is, is this a school that some of your family has gone no, to? No, I had no idea about whether that is a possibility until we got something in the mail from them. Mm -hmm. And I read about it and I looked at, they had this chart that said grade point over here, SAT score over here, here's how much aid you get. And mm -hmm. I thought, we should look this up. Mm -hmm. okay. This is something, and it has, he wants to do engineering, it is the engineering school for Mississippi. Mm -hmm. We checked it out. We visited it. Um, he got a fellowship there from the industrial engineering department, so a little extra money mm -hmm. uh, based on his application, which you know, sometimes I'll hear your kid and say, well, uh, 
is he giving it to him? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it, it was a really it was a, it, it was a good fit. As we looked at it more, we, he he applied to about a dozen schools, and now he's down there and he's having a great time studying a lot. Which right, is right. I don't know what's happened. What pod has taken over my son there? Maybe it's the Boy Scout. <laughs> it could be. Well, it, it is. It is something that was really important for right. him. It mm-hmm. was, you know, he had some health issues that he's had for his life, and he's going to be dealing with for his entire life, and it provided something where he could mm-hmm. prove himself and mm-hmm. learn those the character, but also the confidence. The confidence once you see these. Uh, young these boys turn into young men. It's, a, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's an amazing transformation. Mm-hmm. Uh, the leadership that they take on, the seriousness that they start mm-hmm. to take on, it's really uh, remarkable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I see moms falling apart now that their kids have gone to college. You can keep it real. You can be vulnerable and you can risk yourself with me. <laughs> How does it feel, uh, uh, now that your son is gone, how does it feel that he's not in the house? And well, what's that like to finally have one child that's in college, in a way? Someone asked me, do I miss him? And I said, well, he's doing the dishes the same number of times that he did when he was at home. So in that sense, no, I don't. Uh-huh. Uh, but it's, you know, it's funny. I was talking to our neighbor, and he said, after a week, he said, have you talked to Henry since you've been gone? And I said, yeah, we've, we text and we've talked a few times, you know just short bursts mm-hmm. of conversation. He said, when we were younger, you know, once we were off to college, there was no conversation with mm-hmm. the parents for at least a week or two. And, mm-hmm. and we said it was because, you know, long distance was expensive. Right. And now that there's this communication, and it's more like short things, but, uh, but I'm, yeah, I miss him, but at the same time, this is the point. We're getting him ready to go out mm-hmm. and become that individual who we hope they will be. Right. And so to see him off, yeah, I miss him because he's interesting. And you know, I think I was telling someone also, when you are, when your, your, your child is ready to go and they're itching to go, uh, but you don't really want them to go because they become really interesting, mm-hmm. that, that's a sign that maybe you did an okay job. Yeah, and yeah. so, you know, I'm, I'm excited for him to go out and do it. And the longer he's been down there and the longer he's talking about how excited he is about his classes, even though they're really hard, it's, you know, I, I think, yeah, this is right. Yeah, so a good feeling. It's a very good feeling, especially since, you know, he's not, you know, he's, he's, he's not, he doesn't feel a huge amount of anxiety. He, enough, but, you mm-hmm. know, he's, he's doing pretty well with there, with it. Good, good, good. So you uh, have, you know, you've been a parent, you're, mm-hmm. you know, you're a husband, you're a scout leader. Mm-hmm. So what do you see in your future? I mean, do you see yourself being the local school council president or being an alderman? No, or, no. I, uh, being I, the president of the United States of America? No, what's, what's next? There's only one from Hyde Park <laughs> that, you know, every, every f- a few years. So, uh-huh. you know, right, that's right. All <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, I've been involved in scouting, and I really enjoy that, and Henry's gone off, and mm-hmm. I'm still remaining scoutmaster for a while. Mm-hmm. I'm involved at the district level, and we're thinking about how can we engage more youth on the south south side. Mm-hmm. That's really important. Um, how can we get more merit badges out for them? How can we get them to learn more and think more? Mm-hmm. Uh, because there are too many distractions, you know, too much silliness mm-hmm. out there mm-hmm. that we want to try and show them that it is. And I remember there's there was one, and I, I participate in a lot of Eagle Scout board of, boards of review for our district. And there was one young man, he had, you know, he had graduated from high school, he was a mover, and he said, yeah, I'm gonna continue, you know, uh, continue on as, a, as, an, as an adult leader. You know, this is a kid who, I don't think he, he did, as, you know, he, he didn't do overly well in high school, but he, something in there really responded to him. Mm-hmm. And he said, I want to show these kids that being a Boy Scout is cool. Right. And right. I thought, you know, no matter what you're going to do, whether you're going to be a tradesman or a mover or, you know, go off to college or whatever, mm-hmm. it is something that is important and you have to pass it on. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, you know, my dad was a high school teacher for over 30 years. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like that. You want to see these kids, um, 
you you see it in them before they can see it in themselves, and you want to see them realize that. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm 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 glad that you're wanting to find more ways to make it uh, happen on the south side mm -hmm. of Chicago. Uh, definitely. Um, uh, a lot of our boys, you know, could use that anchoring. And we've got a lot of great leaders on the South Side. have been doing this longer than me, who mm -hmm. I look to when I say, these are the people I want to be when I grow up as a leader. Yeah, yeah, so, so that's really good. So you've lived here in Hyde Park um, on the South Side. Mm -hmm. um, where else have you lived? Have you, you know... Well, I've, I've been in Hyde Park uh, for the last 21 years. My wife and I moved here. She works as a nurse. Mm -hmm. electronic medical records person now at the, at the hospital. Uh, I grew up in the northwest suburbs in Hoffman Estates. Okay. Uh, and I went to college at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. For my senior year, I went to Lancaster, England, to college there for a year and then graduated, took a year off, and went to Indiana University School mm -hmm. of Public and Environmental Affairs down in Bloomington. Mm -hmm. And uh, came back here and lived on the north side for, I think, about close to 10 years, uh, uh, like you do when you're in your 20s. And then uh, we found we couldn't afford the north side, so we moved down to the south side. Mm -hmm. Okay. But my mother is originally from back of the yard, so, uh, you know, the, the south you side kinda, is home. Yeah. yeah, it's coming back. You've had a Midwestern or Illinois kind of Midwestern experience. Midwestern Illinois, yeah. <laughs> kind of experience. So is there one thing about Hyde Park that um, stands out to you as just... You know, if somebody were thinking about moving to Hyde Park, you would highlight this this feature or character. Boy, I mean, it's a, there's one thing about Hyde Park. It's the energy. It's mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, the people who are willing to mix it up on issues and talk and argue, and, and but really in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And especially over the last 15 years, I think it's really gotten a lot more positive. For, uh, for a while there, it was, I think, kind of a negative because there's a lot of change going on. But the, the diversity is so important you get to you you get to be uh exposed to so many different types of people so many different types of backgrounds you know our, when our kids were younger uh you know my wife found this violin program at the park district uh, uh down in englewood it's mm -hmm. out of sherwood park so we were down there so hanging out there talking to people and uh you know but really high park's kind of a center of this 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 different kind of uh energy uh, that mm -hmm. you don't get anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. I I remember a long time ago someone asked me was I from Hyde Park and I wasn't sure <laughs> if it was a compliment, but there is a certain characteristic to Hyde Parkers and I would say that we love a good debate. Yeah, we yeah. love to engage. <laughs> Sometimes in... <laughs> a little too much, but yeah. Yeah, so we're uh, quite opinionated, yes. but I do think you're right, probably open to hearing the other side, yeah. but wanting to maybe win somebody over to, to yeah. our way of thinking. Yeah, you, you're hoping that they're going to uh, listen, at least, so. Um, yeah, let us know about, a, you said you grew up in Hoffman Estate, so I imagine yeah. that that's a little bit different yeah. uh, from the urban climate. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. it was primarily a you know, white <laughs> suburb. There were, you know, there was a little bit of diversity. It's a lot different now than it was back then. Um, it's changed like any, every place has. Uh, but, you know, we were, uh, you know, my mom had grown up in back of the yards mm -hmm. and, you know, came from an immigrant back. Her parents came from uh, Slovakia, Poland, whatever, Hungary, whatever it was in Central mm -hmm. Europe after World War One. So, but we had this sort of ethnic background, this Central European kind of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of, a, of a thing going on. And it was, you know, you my, her, she talks about her background in Back of the Yards. It was uh, Polish, Czechs, Slovaks, people of different backgrounds mm -hmm. just coming together. And, you know, a lot of people would move in particular directions. She should have followed the southwest side, but she went northwest side with my dad, who was mm -hmm. from Berwyn, uh, you know, following along with the poles. But it was, uh, it was, it was a different type of uh, upbringing than what I, what our kids had here, I think. But mm -hmm. it was also at a time when, you know, you're growing up watching TV and you're seeing Jesse Jackson on TV all the time, talking to the kids, getting them to chant "I am somebody," mm -hmm. and you know, he's talking to the kids at that school on the south side or on the west side or wherever. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking about it. It actually it was resonating to a lot of us, too, in the suburbs and in the north side, 
too, because he was talking to us. We are somebody, and everyone else who he's talking to, they are somebody. Mm -hmm. So it was permeating throughout sort of the, the whole atmosphere of the area, I think, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know you as a scout leader, mm -hmm. and that's a big part of your personality mm -hmm. and your presence here in Hyde Park. Tell us something about you we may not know, that may not be as visible. Oh, jeez, I don't know. Um, you get so focused on the scouting stuff. About, <laughs> have I mentioned we're selling popcorn? <laughs> uh, that becomes the big thing. Uh, you know, I like to do a, lot, do a lot of work around the house, and like, you know, I've Finished my, finished my basement okay. uh, over a one year period about ten years ago when my kids were younger and sort of like okay. doing that. I like to do projects like that. You know, just putting up drywall and, and okay. putting up a ceiling and all that. Nothing nothing really fancy, but you know, learning how to do that. But I just really like to work with my hands. I like to read. Okay. Uh, you know, you know, I I like a wide variety of things. That's why Hyde Park, I think, is one of those places that really. Because it's so vibrant and so diverse and different, yeah, yeah. that really appeals to you know what I like. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, I've experienced you as someone who has a sense of humor. You know, you, you don't maybe you don't take yourself too seriously, or others either. <laughs> <laughs> well, I try to beat everyone to the punch on that one. Right, right. Uh, right. Yeah, no. I, I, it's humor is so important in. Uh, breaking down barriers sometimes. People can be so serious and you want to try and maybe keep it a little bit lighter on that. And and that's, I think, you know, you look around sometimes and you think people, they get so caught up in the moment and, you know, they're going to miss something or, you know, you learn more about people, I think, through laughing with them than, mm -hmm. than through arguing with them. I think it's something that's universal and it really brings people together. Uh, and so that's, you know, you, you, I got five older brothers who I grew up with and, you know, we didn't beat each other up physically. We would just like try and insult each other as much as possible, but really trying to joke around it. And it's just, it makes things, I think, a lot easier. It smooths over differences and allows people to move forward a little bit. Yeah, I think in this climate <clears throat> where we're finding ways to be polarized, yeah. um, it is important for us to find ways to connect with one another. And one of the purposes of the podcast is to help us to connect with each other's mm -hmm. humanity. And when people share their stories, you know, I think that leaves room for us to connect with one another. Yeah, well, I, uh, I guess the, the one thing... Uh, in 1985, my letter was read on Late Night with David Letterman, and it led to a recurring character, Funky the Clown, the Late Night Mail Clown. Mm -hmm. So that's my own, my only <laughs> brush with greatness on on the big screen, big uh -huh. stage for that. Uh -huh. but, yeah, but yeah, humor is it's it, you need something because it's just getting caught up in in that you have to find a way out, and humor is the way. Yes. Do you have a favorite comedian by any chance, or are oh. you it? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I wish I was funny. No, I mean, I just like, uh, you know, uh, uh, why am I thinking? I'm trying to think about it. Uh, other, but I'll just, you know, I, I just like a wide variety of comedians right now. Jim Gaffigan is pretty funny because he's talking about family and being caught up in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, why can't I remember his name? Um, Call it a senior moment. Yeah, a middle age moment. moment. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, just anyone. You know, you know, Eddie Murphy was always funny growing okay. up, and just anyone will be who you're. Uh, you know, Jerry Seinfeld was always funny. Mm -hmm. uh, why can't it? Oh. I'm sorry. But it, I, I think you're right. It takes the tension. I remember I was at a conference and this guy's multimedia was not working. Mm -hmm. And then he just told a joke and it was like, because everybody was feeling tense and it just kind of, it yeah. took the tension out of that moment. And so, well, and, and, you know, bring it back to scouting, you know, sometimes there can be tense moments when you're doing it and, you know, getting them to know, you know, we have to, we like to do these campfires where people are singing, mm -hmm. but there's something that's got to be, there's something joyful about it. Some, whether it be singing or comedy mm -hmm. or... Uh, just doing skits, which is something that we try to get the scouts to do because they need to get up in front of people and express themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's usually getting people laughing and it's bringing people in. You know, if someone's awkward and they make someone laugh a little bit, it makes it, them feel less awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said that you uh, like to 
use your hands. Yes. And that you like reading. And during COVID, um, two things went up. People eating and mm -hmm. entertainment. I don't know yeah. if... <laughs> not pointing at you at all. No, 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 I'm pointing at myself first. Was there a movie that you enjoyed watching during COVID or something you did particularly entertaining that? Um, boy, we didn't watch a lot. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I... Tom Hanks had a movie called Greyhound about World War II okay. submariner. It's on Apple Plus. Mm -hmm. um, that was just, you know, talking about the tension of getting a convoy of ships across the Atlantic Ocean amidst all the wolf pack of submarines, U boats, mm -hmm. uh, that was just uh, really entertaining. Um, we just saw um, uh, Bill and Ted's, uh, Bill and Ted Face the Music, uh -huh, which, uh -huh. you know, silly. Just, just something to, to break the tension on it, uh, mm. on all of that. So we, 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 we opened up the wallet for that one just to watch it, you know, mm -hmm. first run streaming. Uh, but yeah, it was, and when we were making it, when I was redoing the basement, my wife insisted that we put in a big uh, projector and screen down there so we got a little screening room to watch it. So. Okay, okay. And you didn't fall for the Disney Plus and to watch Hamilton or... Oh no, well, actually Hamilton, boy that one, I don't know how many times <laughs> we've watched that one. Uh, we saw that, I saw that twice on uh -huh. stage uh -huh. and you know we really enjoy that that movie and so when that came out there was multiple times, multiple watchings of that one because it's just so good. And yeah and it crosses generations amazingly. Yeah. My son watched it and I've seen people of all ages, and I'm not sure how much they're getting from the rapping, but it seems to have crossed a lot of... Well, and he's telling a story about how people work together mm -hmm. when they're not... Uh, when it's hard to find uh, common ground and compromising on it. And really, you know, the amount of work that goes into that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's all about... Um, but it's also <laughs> telling a story about this this country belongs to everyone just through how they cast it yeah. and how the, mm -hmm. the music and using the music to tell the story um, mm -hmm. and that you know there's people are flawed he was a very flawed man but what he accomplished led to a lot of great things and you know we have to recognize that sometimes things take time but you have people out behind there pushing hard too mm -hmm. so there's this, how do you deal with the tension? You have people who are a little slower, people are pushing a little harder, and how do you work that out? Yeah. It's a really important message. Yeah, it seems like there were some universal things yeah. that allow people to enter from different class and yeah. race and, you know, gender backgrounds, kind of. And different musical styles, <laughs> you know. Who, who The different styles tell the story, too. Thomas Jefferson, after, after having been... <laughs> in France is six R and B when everyone else has switched over to rap, and then mm. you've got the King George singing the oh, the uh, the sixties. Yeah. So it's it, it's really a very sophisticated uh, musical and comedy mm. and drama, and just, you know, really entertaining and fun. It it it, it is that. So um, so it's been so exciting to have Jeff with us today. And what's even more exciting is the Boy Scouts are in the middle of their fundraiser and it's not too late for you to be a part of this. The Girl Scouts sell cookies and I learned something new. The Boy Scouts sell popcorn. So for the winter, that Netflix movie, the football games coming up, or for the holidays, gifts, you can buy popcorn and support the Boy Scouts. And Jeff, do you want to say a little bit more? Sure. We've got a number of products that go to support our programming uh, for Scouts who don't have the resources to join, but also to help us uh, take them to, to camp. And we've got a $10 uh, bucket here of uh, caramel popcorn, but we also have things like uh, cheddar popcorn and sea salt caramel, jalapeno cheese popcorn, uh, Chicago style popcorn, uh, chocolate, if you want chocolate, we have two different types of chocolate and peanut popcorn, uh, something that's really uh, important. It ranges from uh, $10 for this one in my hands to, uh, I think we've got some that are $30, like the Chicago uh, mix, which has more, uh, 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 more popcorn in it. So it's a really uh, important fundraiser. It's the big push that we have every year. And uh, we're hoping that people will 
Uh, email us at hptroop512 at gmail.com and uh, ask for uh, the list of products and prices. Support our troops locally right here in Hyde Park. So, you know, uh, a lot of time these days we learn a little bit about each other on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I was stalking your page a little bit <laughs> in preparation for today. And so you had this uh, Facebook post about some kind of association with hell and pineapple pizza. <laughs> And I think you were questioning my commitment to the Lord, or, or, you know, well, because I, I like pineapple pizza. So I just need to, we need to clarify some things here. Well, I, I believe that uh, pineapple pizza is actually a satanic plot. Uh, and it's, really? it's, 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 it's really uh, tempting, you know, it's the devil tempting in the garden. And it, it, it needs to be avoided at all costs. So you, as a theologian, should understand this. I should, I should. So tell me, what pizza would put me closer to God? <laughs> I want to be close. <laughs> what well, do you like on your pizza? Oh, uh, I grew up, my mom would make pizzas. And we would have sausage, pepper, mushroom, onion. I will take anything on the pizza except pineapple. Except pineapple. Except for pineapple. But that's just, you know, it's Chicago is not big on the, I think, the sweet on the, mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. pizza. But I can understand people wanting the sweet and the salty on that. Well, I like pepperoni and pineapple. So yeah. that's a good kind of, you know, kind of like the popcorn, yes, a little yeah. bit of a sweet and salty I'm sure, taste. I'm sure God will forgive. Okay, okay. But I just, I'm learning stuff from a scout leader that I didn't know. So. Yeah, no, no. As, you know, it's kind of like the Chicago hot dogs. You know, there's a certain way they're supposed to be done. And, you know, Chicago pizza, I don't think pineapple is there. So. Okay, 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 so. Um, do you have a favorite pizza place? The other day, me and my son tasted Lou something Pinaldi. Lou Malnati's. Yes, and I'd never heard of it. He had won a gift card there mm -hmm. in... My friend was like, "You're going to," and, and you know, you know, there for the, if you want, you know, there's two types of Chicago pizza. There's you know, the deep dish, deep dish. The, that everyone knows, but really, you know, the square cut is mm -hmm. you know the tavern style pizza is the other one that most people in Chicago will eat. You know, you know, Leona's has a good one, but for the deep dish, you know, Pizzeria Due or Uno are are mm -hmm. really good. Mm -hmm. Lou Malnati's also really good. They're all different. Eduardo's um, mm -hmm. on the north side. There was a place called Chicago's that we really liked. It's just kind of the different mm -hmm. but for for the square cut uh, you know I, I think uh, Leona's has a good one um, okay. that that's good and you know you can tell a lot about a person by which part of the square cut pizza they take uh, yeah I like the middle so I don't know what that means I don't like the edges at all I you don't want, like the, see, I want pizza all I mean, I like the edges it, it feels it, like it cuts me out of something like I'm getting a little pizza and I'm getting a little bit of hard dough well I you know, always let's, I believe you have to start from the outside and move in it's so okay. you know because something about digging into that middle piece just seems wrong first you know yeah I try to let other people no, no, no. you're doing it the right way you're doing it the right way so uh, on High Park Classic, I'm not sure if you follow their page yes. on Facebook, there's this discussion about what's the best place to get pizza in High yeah, Park. Yeah, I saw that one. And so a lot of people said Medici, and there was a whole list of things. Someone said Eduardo's, which used to be on 57th Street and is now gone, but you know, that was a good one. But uh, uh, we've got Giordano's, which is, you know, mm -hmm. considered to be one of the classic ones around mm -hmm. too, so. So if you were going to put your vote in, who would you vote for in High Park? Oh, it's hard. It's hard. I mean, there's so many. They're so different, and you know, yeah. you, it depends on what you're, what you like, what, what you, you taste, want. Yeah. I mean, the only place you can really get the, you know, the, the deep dish is at Giordano's here. Right, if you want right, that, right, right. Uh, but I think, you know, Medici is really good, and uh, Leona's I've always kind of liked, mm -hmm. but that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's a, but you know, we end up getting Domino's a lot too. Right, right. So, okay. So my last question, the question I ask everybody that is on our podcast is, what's on your bucket list to do with uh, the remainder of your gift on earth? Uh, something you'd like, it was something on your bucket list to do. You know, I want to get my daughter out of the house to college for one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then that'll be it? <laughs> well, yeah, then I'll, then I'll have some time to think about it. But you know, you know, teenagers. But, you know, I, I, um, 
I, I don't, I've never really thought about what the bucket list is. You know, what's the, the big thing you want to do? Because, you know, right now, you know, the thing I want to do right now is I want to make sure that we're keeping scouts going in, in mm -hmm. Hyde Park and, and in, on the south side because there are a lot of challenges facing it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, thinking about that and thinking about what you, what you leave behind because mm -hmm. um, there's generations. You know, my great-grandparents came to, uh, my dad's side came from Sweden in 1893 and they came to uh, Hyde Park at, at, uh, for the World's Columbian Exposition in 1893, and then they, of course, moved down to Texas, been moving up north. But you think about what's passed from generation to generation, and it's more of, you know, what do you leave behind with your kids? What do you leave behind with all the others? And so thinking about what I want to do, I want to see what I'm going to do for others. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, Jeff, what a kind heart of time. So thank you for sharing of yourself today. And, um, we pray and we wish you the best of